Hey guys, just a few short weeks ago Intel announced the next gen CPUs, which hopefully will be the end of the 14 nanometer process. Unfortunately, those chips are still not quite ready. Nevertheless, their company motherboards are already coming to market. This right here is a Z590 motherboard from ASUS. It's the ROG Maximus 13 Hero. It's a pricey beast, so let's see what you get for your money. Let's talk about it. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. So first off, this is a big board with plenty of features. It is ready for the 11th gen Intel processors, but it also supports the 10th gen should you wish to use it before the next gen CPUs are available. The small board is using 14 plus 2 teamed power stages rated at 90 amps. For that, you'll have the two 8-pin power connections at the top. On the right hand side, we have four DIMM slots supporting dual channel DDR4 memory with speeds up to 5,333 MHz and total maximum capacity of 128 gigabytes. If you plan to go with some crazy fast RAM, please review the memory qualified vendor list on Asus website. Heading down the board, we finally have PCIe Gen 4 support. Welcome to the future, Intel. As this is a high-end board, the top two X16 expansion slots are actually traced with PCIe Gen 4, providing you're using one of the new Intel 11th Gen CPUs. While you don't have enough lanes on the CPU to run two times X16 graphics cards, you will actually be able to run them in SLI in 8 plus 8 mode. And as a PCIe Gen 4, it would have similar bandwidth to 16 plus 16 equivalent on a PCIe Gen 3. Moving further down, we have an extra times 16 slot and one times one slot in between. These are wired up to the Z590 chipset and they're running on PCIe Gen 3. Talking about chipset, in this generation, Intel has doubled the amount of lanes between the CPU and the chipset. Now it is a total of eight, avoiding going up to PCIe Gen 4. I guess they did it to keep the cost down for the traces. Regardless of that, we get a lot more IO and storage options. On this board, it is possible to install up to four M.2 drives, two of which support PCIe Gen 4. Do note that the top drive is only compatible with Intel 11th Gen CPU, otherwise it'll be disabled. On top of the M.2 drives, there are up to six SATA ports. There is one important detail. If you're using all four M.2 drives, then the last two SATA ports are actually disabled, as there's just simply not enough PCIe lanes to feed all the components. It is not ideal, but having an option is still preferred. Moving on to fans. This board is clearly suitable for a large water cooling setup as it has six fan headers and two water pump headers. Also, we have sensors for temperature, flow, water in, water out. Basically, you're fully covered. Across the board, we also find three addressable RGB headers as well as one standard RGB header. On the right hand side, we have the expected USB Type-C and USB Type-A expansion ports with some USB 2.0 at the bottom. To be honest, I don't expect many people using those except possibly to run some RGB or fan controllers. For the tinkerers out there, there is the usual QLED to help with troubleshooting as well as clear CMOS and BIOS flashback buttons. On the back, we have nicely integrated IO plate with a whole lot of ports. The most notable ones include antenna connections for the latest Wi-Fi 6E, dual 2.5 gigabit network ports, dual Thunderbolt 4 ports, as well as 6 USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. And to top it all off, there is an ROG Supreme FX 7.1 surround sound. So this board clearly has something for everyone. We've got a massive amount of options in terms of storage, I.O. and cooling. I would say this amount of features probably best suited for somebody who is building out an epic rig to do both gaming as well as some productivity tasks. My only concern is that Intel has reduced their maximum amount of cores on their latest CPUs down to 8, thus making this caliber motherboard potentially a dead end. So anyone planning to build a high-end machine, do consider what you'll be doing now and in the next few years. What kind of horsepower do you actually need in the future? I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.